In this video, we're going to have a look at Pascal's rule and prove in a more conceptual way why this equation here is true. So Pascal's rule is given by this equation, n choose k is equal to n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k. So before we go about proving it then, we're going to look at a specific example so we can see clearly what is going on. So in this example, using Pascal's rule, we're going to look at the case when n equals 5 and k equals 3. So what we're going to get then is if n equals 5 and k is 3, we'll have 5 choose 3, and that is equal to, or n minus 1 will be 4, k minus 1 is 2. So we have 4 choose 2 plus, then n minus 1, 4 choose k is 3. So we'll look at this 5 choose 3 term. So we can think of 5 choose 3 as choosing three things. So we're going to choose three from uh, this set here. So we'll have five elements, A, B, C, D, and E. So now we'll systematically write out all the ways we can choose three things from the set of five elements, A, B, C, D, E. So what we're going to have then is A, B, C, A, B, D, A, B, E, and then A, C, D, A, C, E, A, D, E, and then starting with B, we have B, C, D, B, C, E, B, D, E, and finally C, D, E. So counting all these up then, we can see that we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 10 ways that we can choose three things um, from that set A, B, C, D, E. So we can say then that we have 5 choose 3 is equal to 10. So now we'll look at 4 choose 2. So we can think of this as choosing two things from the set A, B, C, D. So we'll list out all the ways we can choose two things from that set of four elements. So we can have A, B, A, C, A, D, and then B, C, B, D, and C, D. So we can see then that we have one, two, three, four, five, six ways of choosing two things from that set of four elements, A, B, C, D. So we can say then that four choose two is equal to six. So finally then, we'll look at our four choose three term. So we can think of this then as choosing three from the set of four elements, A, B, C, D. So listing out all the ways we can do this, or well we can have A, B, C, A, B, D, A, C, D, and B, C, D. So we can see then, we've got one, two, three, four ways of doing this. So we can say then that four choose three is equal to four. So let's come back up to our equation here and plug in everything we've got. So on the left hand side, we had five choose three was equal to 10. And then on the right hand side, we had four choose two was equal to six. And then plus four choose three is equal to four. So we can see then that the left and right hand sides are equal. So Pascal's rule definitely works then for when n equals 5 and k equals 3. So let's look more closely then at why this works. So this is why we've gone to all the trouble of listing everything out. So let's look at our list here of all the groups of 3 that we're able to choose from our set of 5 elements. So we'll go first and circle all the groups that contain E. So we're going to have a, B, E, 
ACE, ADE, BCE, BDE, and CDE. So we've got six groups that contain E, and then we'll circle the groups that don't contain E. So that's ABC, ABD, ACD, and BCD. So we can see then that we've got six groups that contain E and four groups that don't. And in our equation, the right hand side is equal to six plus four. So it's not a coincidence that we've ended up with six groups that contain E and four that don't. So if we look at all the groups that contain E and cross out the E, well then we're left with just the same six groups that we've got from our four choose two list, that list in red there. So the reason that works is because if we want to choose three things from our set of five elements, A, B, C, D, E, and we've already decided in advance that we definitely want E to be in these groups, well then we've already got one element, so we've got two things left to choose, and we've got four things, A, B, C, D, left to choose from. So there's four choose two ways of doing that. Now looking at the groups that don't contain E, so that's the group circled in blue, so that's that ABC, ABD, ACD, and BCD, well they match exactly with our four choose three list, which we've written out in blue at the bottom. And the reason that is, if we want to choose three things from our set of five elements, and we've decided that we definitely do not want E to be in any of these groups, then well, we've still got three things left to choose, but we've only got four elements left to choose from, A, B, C, D. So there's four choose three ways of doing that. So to choose three things from our group of five, A, B, C, D, E, we can choose to either include E or to not include E. So if we include E, well that means we've got two things left to choose and our four elements A, B, C, D to choose from. If we decide not to include E, well then we've got to choose all three things from A, B, C, D. So that's where we get our four choose three. So as each type of selection either contains E or it does not, then by the addition principle, we'll get five choose three is equal to four choose two plus four choose three. Okay, so that gives us an example of why Pascal's rule works. So what we'll do now is we'll go and prove it in more general terms. So now we're going to prove Pascal's rule. And there is more than one way of doing this. You can take a computational approach, but in this video, we're going to do it in a more conceptual way. So let's say we've got a class of N students and we want to choose a team of K students to enter a math competition. So now if we think then of all the possible teams that we can make, well, we've got N students and we're choosing K of them for our team. So it's going to be a total of N choose K possible teams. Now let's say we've got a star student in the class and we definitely want them on our team. So that means we've got K minus one places on our team left to fill and N minus one students to choose from. So this means then that we've got n minus one choose k minus one possible teams that include our star student. Now let's say we don't want to include our star student in the team for whatever reason. So that means then we've still got k places left to fill in our team, but only n minus one students to choose from. So that means the number of possible teams that don't include our star student is n minus one choose k. So every team then either includes the star student or it doesn't include the star student. There's no overlap between those two types of selection. So by the addition principle then, we have our total number of possible teams, which is n choose k. Well, that's going to be equal to all the possible teams that include our star student. So it's n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus all the possible teams that don't include the star student, so that was n minus one, choose k. That then completes our proof of Pascal's rule. 
So hopefully going over it in this more conceptual way gives you a clearer idea of why this formula works.